What's going on, people? I actually have some magic jelly beans. For real. I got, I'm, I'm not bullshitting you. I actually have... I actually am bullshitting you. It is a magic jelly bean. Not beans. Bean. So, just hold on to it. Hold on for it. Just wait. But and seriously, it is one of the best magic jelly beans you've ever tasted. If you want to learn how to thrive in the disruptive economy, enroll in Hustlers University today. Hit that green bar and you'll be good to go. All right, I'm not gonna keep you. I'm not gonna, I know you're just chomping at the bit. You want that magic jelly bean. I'm gonna give it to you. The ultimate magic jelly bean is discipline. Many people want to work from home. They want to have a business. They want to be the boss. They want to run their life, do what they want to do on their terms. But they have about as much discipline as a hog in the trough. That's the problem. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care about your resources, your educational credentials. If you do not have personal discipline, you will not go where you want to go. You will not reach the levels that you want to reach. It's just simply not going to happen. At this juncture of my internet marketing career, that's what I am, that's what I do, I've seen some things. I've had several classes, several students, and I've noticed, and this is the case of Hustler A and Hustler B. Hustler A is very well to do, kind of got into the storage auction thing, but smart person, Hustler B, ass out. Life was falling apart, going through a divorce, custody issues. Hustler A, in the beginning, was spanking Hustlers B in the ass in terms of results, in terms of money made. Because I'll, I'll tell you, Hustler A did about 15 G's in a month while holding down a job. So, like I said, Hustler A is a hustler. Now, Hustler B, who stumbled down, fell, was talked about, understand, Hustler B is going through a divorce. Well, the divorce is over now. Was going through a divorce, was talked about like a dog. Hustler A, stroking it out. Stroking it out. Stroking it out. Hustler B made a decision. And I remember doing the call. He said, G, I don't care what the fuck I have to do. I'm going to make this shit work. That's what he said. And at the time, I didn't really think that Hustler B had a shot. Because he just, if he could do something wrong, he would. If he could make the proper, improper, if he could make the wrong decision, he would make the wrong decision. It was just like really rocky for about eight months. But Hustler B stuck with it. Hustler A, stroking, stroking, stroking. I went back and I talked to them, both of them. Hustler A is no longer in the business. Hustler A recently lost his job. So Hustler A is working for father-in-law who owns a business. And, you know, Hustler A is straight. You know, it's just like, since I'm working for my father-in-law and I've got these eyes on me, you know, I really can't be distracted. I need to be 100% present, which I understand. Man's married, kids, wife, working for the father. It's a lot of stress. So he can't be trying to do this and this when he's got to deal with dear old dad. Hustler B is no longer married. But now Hustler B is stroking it out. And I was just like, when I talked to both of them, I said like, because uh, you know, Hustler A ain't made some noise. I was like, what happened? I mean, why didn't you stick with it? Because you were killing it. And 
he told me. He's like, I killed it for that month. It's just, he, he was just straight up. He's like, I don't have to hustle. And in the beginning, I was very interested because of the newness factor, the novelty. It was just, it's like a treasure hunt for adults. And he said, when that wore off, I wasn't motivated. Fully had the capabilities. Like, you know, it's like I stopped going to auctions and just fell off. Hustler B goes to storage auctions. Never stopped. Got his ass handed to him the first year. Shows were at their peak. Never stopped. And I asked Hustler B, I was like, well, what was the difference? He said, I remember watching one of your videos when you said that you wrote your first book, you did nothing else. You didn't go out, you put yourself on the budget. If it wasn't about writing that book, it wasn't, he said, I became a storage auction fiend. He said, even when I didn't have money, I went to auctions. I talked to people. <clears throat> Since people saw me at the auction, I became a regular. He said, and I remember some of your videos, and I'll tell you, if you go through the video channel, they're there. It's like, I started getting stuff for free for people. I didn't have any money, so I got stuff for free, sold that, made some money. And he used the term that cracked me up because when I ever hear this term, it always makes me giggle. He's like, I parlayed that into some more money. And he said, I, you know, I remember when you said that when you were in the boarding house, you had two full time jobs. So I got me a piece of shit job and I did storage auctions. He's like, you know, my marriage was over. My, he said, I have shit else to do except work. So I worked my job. I worked storage auctions. I did eBay. I did Craigslist. I did Amazon. He said, one day I looked up and I had $10,000 in my checking account. I was like, he said, you know, he said it became a habit for me to work hard. See, the difference between Hustler A and Hustler B is discipline. Hustler B made himself extremely disciplined in becoming successful. Hustler B no longer has a job. Hustler B is a full-time storage auction buyer. And Hustler B lives in a better house than he had before. Uh, he still has struggles with the kids, you know, because she's a trip. But also, he said, <laughs> he's a longtime subscriber. He said, uh, since I hustle, I've got that hustler mindset. I make money to take care of my kids, but I can't be taken. He's, you know, because we talked privately about that. And he said, I'm in a position to do for my kids and I see them as often as I can. And when they need something, I have the money because I work hard. It's a very, very big thing for a man. A lot of people think, oh, no, it's 2003. No, that's big shit for a dude. And I'm looking at it and he's going and he, a full time storage auction buyer in this time with the TV shows and everything. But because he was disciplined. To the point of he pushed all the distractions out of his life. And I've seen this so many times that you have people who on paper look like they're going to win. I thought Hustler A had it. He was stroking it. I thought, you know, he's going to have this big story. You know, we talked all this other stuff. And when the novelty wore off, this motivation wore off, his discipline wasn't that great to begin with. It, he was just... He was sucked in. Whereas Hustler B was catching hell. And I know the journey of Hustler B. I went through it myself. When you were go ass out, you got two choices. Either you could give up or you can say fuck no. And Hustler B said fuck no. And now what I'm getting to is the magic jelly bean of all personal success is discipline it is that's it now let's talk about the layers of discipline because you have many people when you say that word a disciplined person is first thing is they don't eat this they don't just like there's different forms of love there's different forms of discipline you can have a i've seen it uh, i know of a surgeon big boy best surgeon i know for his field he doesn't have the discipline to Keep himself from being <laughs> obese, but if you need to be cut open, this is the dude you want. So he's a disciplined surgeon, but he's not disciplined in his personal life. So you got to look at that. And with your discipline, 
you've got to kind of spread it out or spend it like it's cash. Say, just for the sake of this video, you've got 10 bars of discipline and each bar lasts for two hours. Are you going to use that for food? Are you going to use that for money making activities? Are you going to use that for exercise? Because you only have 10 bars. So from a really sound decision making procedure, you would put your discipline in the area that it makes the most sense versus just kind of spreading it across the board and that work life balance. I mean, it may make sense for you to put your 10 bars of discipline straight into your business. Or it may make sense to put your 10 bars of discipline straight into your family. It just depends on your personal circumstances. But know this, without the magic jelly bean of dis discipline, you're not going anywhere. You might up, down, up, down. You might look good for a minute, but long term, without long term discipline and consistency working on whatever you're doing, it's not going to reach fruition. And I think with the internet, and I said this on my spreecast, because the time of your business, like growing to the point where it could support you, has been compressed. I mean, literally, you can start a business today, six months from now, 12 months now, I said 12 to 18 months, your business could be providing you a full-time income, realistically, in this disruptive economy. So that's, tr that, that's changed, because I'm from the old economy. But I've embraced the new economy because the old economy was getting loans, running space. It's not like that anymore. You can do so much. It's incredible what you can do in this new economy. So understand, you've got to get your discipline up. And there are many people who will disagree with this statement because part of living in America is people want to throw you in that box and refuse to let you out. I believe if you don't know how to currently be an entrepreneur, you can learn how to be an entrepreneur. In the movie Swordfish, which is one of my favorite movies with John Travolta, Haley Berry, and um, I forget the other guy's name, there's this moment there in the car and he's like, drive. And the guy's like, I don't know how to do it. drive a stick shift. And the guy said, learn. Boom. Learn. You can learn. So if you don't have high discipline now, you can make it a habit like Hustler B. He didn't have all that in the beginning, but due to his life burning down around him, he developed it because it was a situation of sink or swim. And he was just like, I am flipper. I am the, I am the humpback whale. I am going to do this. So it's a choice. If you don't have it now, you can get it. That is the epitome of the Hustler mindset. Many people, going back to that box, well, I wasn't born in the right family. I wasn't born the right color. I was born a man. I was born a woman. I was born queer. I was born... All of these self-fulfilling prophecies of doom, gloom, and mediocrity, many people choose this. And see, this is the thing. Success is a choice on either side of the coin. You choose to be successful. You choose to not be successful. Either way, it's still a choice. And many people think it's happenstance. It's just like, it just happened. If you're in the middle of the street and someone runs a light and hits you, that's happenstance. That's an accident. If you are 60 years old and you are still making eight bucks an hour and you've never made more than that, that was a personal choice. It was a personal choice. Because at some point... You then wake up and go, this $8 an hour is not getting it. You know what? I can't date because I need to go to school or get a trade or start a business or hustle. Or Life is a matter of trade-offs. It is a matter of trade-offs, which goes right back to discipline. At one point, when I was totally focused on writing, I was doing 5,000, 8,000 words a day. When I wrote my first book, it was a struggle to do 500 words a day. I'm talking about 8, 12. It was a struggle. I'm talking head-dropping. 
but I stuck with it. And sticking with it isn't sitting there like, okay, I'm ha- I have a problem. Let me go read this book. Let me listen to this podcast. Let me join this Facebook group. Let me discuss it. Oh, here's this book. Here's this resource. Oh, now I can do a thousand words in a day. Oh, now I can do two thousand. It was a progression that was hinged on discipline. I remember doing stupid stuff like, okay, I cannot get out of this chair until I write, you know, 150 words. I don't care if I have to go to the bathroom. I got to 150 and I'm running. I'm serious. You have to mess with yourself to make it happen, which goes back to discipline. That is the magic jelly bean of success. Discipline. It trumps everything else. Because if you don't have it, discipline will help you get it. If you need more of it, discipline will help you get it. It all goes back to discipline. I'm a hustler. It's like that. You know, we do it times two. All right. This is Glendon Cameron. I will see you on the good side. And be sure to sign up for my Hustler U email list. First link below. So you can get special offers in your inbox. Thanks for watching. And... Happy Thanksgiving.